Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here, and today I'm here to bring you my final predictions for the Apple iPhone 6. With the event date officially set for September 9th, it is just around the corner, and the world is eager to see what Apple comes out with for this iPhone redesign. It has been two years since the iPhone has been redesigned, so I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this moment. As always, there are many leaks and rumors surrounding the iPhone 6 dating back quite a few months, but in this video I'll try my best to filter down that information and kind of give you my opinion on what I think we will see on Apple's 8th iteration of the iPhone since 2007. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the display, perhaps one of the most anticipated features on the iPhone 6. For the most part, the iPhone has always been one of the smallest flagship smartphones on the market, at least in the recent years, where Android devices have been continuously growing in size year after year. The iPhone 6 is stated across the board to feature a 4.7 inch 1704 by 960 resolution display with a 416 ppi, however there are also rumors contrasting the fact that the iPhone will feature a 1334 by 750 326 ppi. But I really hope that Apple finally does push that ppi pixel density over 400. There's also some rumors of a 5.5 inch iPhone but that is highly in question at this point. Another feature that has been getting a lot of hype is the rumored sapphire crystal display. Sapphire in the past has been used in iPhone elements such as the camera lens, the home button, covering the Touch ID fingerprint sensor seen on the iPhone 5S due to its durability, and in a recent video by MKBHD who claimed to have tested a leaked part from Sony Dixon, the sapphire display seemed to stand its ground in scratch and even bend tests. So maybe this time it is finally time to say goodbye to cracked iPhone display, but as expected this would likely drive the costs up and bring production issues since sapphire is obviously a harder material to produce in order to keep up with Apple's demand. One of the first physical leaks of the iPhone 6 was seen through the dummies, which from the start has been pointing to a thinner, rounder, and more streamlined design throughout the device, which seems to resemble the design of the iPod Touch. It is said to measure in at just about 6mm in thickness, and with the streamlined edges and even rounded display accents, the device will certainly have more of a streamlined and potentially slippery feel in the hand. With the larger form factor though, the buttons will without a doubt be located on the side like seen on the dummy units, and there have also been rumors circulating in the rumor mill about illuminating Apple logo on the back, and although that would obviously be a pretty cool touch to the device, we haven't seen that before. In my opinion, I would rather have that battery powered spared. Speaking of the battery though, or lack thereof, it seems to be one of the biggest complaints of the iPhone in general. The iPhone 5S currently features a 1560 milliamp hour battery which for every user like me can barely get me through 3pm in a given day. There have been leaks of both an 1810 milliamp hour battery as well as a significant increase of a 291500 milliamp hour battery and I gotta say I myself as well as many others I'm sure will be extremely disappointed if the battery improvement is a mere 300 milliamp hours keeping in mind it must power a larger display with a a potentially higher resolution. On the other hand, a 2950 milliamp hour battery would have me ecstatic, but in short words, it will be very interesting to see what Apple ends up doing with the battery on the iPhone 6, especially with the rumored reduction in thickness of the upcoming iPhone. Moving on to the specs, this part is normally no surprise. With each successor of the iPhone, we do see spec bumps, and we are expected to see a 20 nanometer AH chip, which by the way, leaked logic boards have confirmed. With 1GB of RAM, it should offer the same increases in performance as we see each year, and although early reports suggested a quad-core processor, it is likely Apple has once again stuck with a dual-core processor, hopefully with a gigahertz count of over 2. But in the past, although Apple devices don't necessarily blow us away on the spec sheet, the performance without a doubt is able to live up to a flagship standard without hesitation. Leak logic boards have also indicated NFC is more than likely going to be seen on the iPhone 6 removal payments, alongside 802.11ac Wi-Fi support. 
The last thing I would like to talk about in this video is the camera. For the most part, despite its somewhat low megapixel count compared to other flagships on the market, the iPhone 5S has been my go-to smartphone camera. It is able to capture a very consistent image. On the iPhone 6, however, I think we can be pretty hopeful that we will see a 13 megapixel sensor said to come from Sony. There will also have been rumors that it may incorporate optical image stabilization due to speculations that Apple has been working with OIS gyroscope company IvanSense. The part that I'm curious about really is whether or not the iPhone 6 will be able to record 4K video. So let me know your thoughts on that. So aside from all the things I discussed in this video here, here are some of the things that we should expect when the iPhone is launched. The fact that it will once again be coming in three colors, silver, gold, and space gray, three storage configurations, 1632 and 64 non-expandable, and hit the market at the same price we see with every flagship smartphone from Apple. And going by the past release schedules, the device is rumored to hit the stores a week and a half following the Tuesday, September 9th event on Friday, September 19th. It all is historically correct, as that is what we saw in the past. The devices are always released on a Friday. But aside from that, I thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And be sure to leave any thoughts down in the comment section in case I miss anything or your opinions. And be sure to hit that like button while you're at it, as that helps me out a bunch. I'll see you all in the next video.